this club would not be as evolved uh, and uh, uh, successful and have as many trophies without his uh, um, time here. Um, had an amazing uh, eight years working with Craig, uh, sorry, working with Garth. Um, uh, and uh, he, he will forever be a, a part of the Sounders history and a, and a, and a super important part of that history. Uh, but today we're here to talk uh, about Craig Weidel um, and his new role. Uh, I am super, super excited to work with Craig. Um, you know, I, I got to know Garth really well uh, in, the, in the time leading up to bringing him in to be the, the general manager uh, of the team. Uh, and I feel like uh, it's put me in a, in a unique position to understand what, um, uh, what attributes uh, make someone successful in the role. Um, I, I've known Craig a long time also. I've known Craig 20 years plus. Um, Craig has deep roots in this community. Uh, he understands our culture. He understands our fans. He understands the people in the organization. Uh, uh, he understands our players. Uh, and, you know, all of that wrapped around kind of a, a, a culture uh, piece uh, that, that is always so important to me. Um, you, you know, I say this a lot, but organizations win and lose together. Uh, it is the sum of the parts. It's not an individual. And something I really appreciate uh, with Craig is, is, is he absolutely gets that. Um, uh, he knows that it, that it is going to take uh, everyone in the same boat, rowing the same direction, uh, for us to continue to have success, win championships, uh, galvanize our club, uh, be that shining beacon uh, for all of North American soccer to admire and aspire to. Uh, we have done we have done amazing work here in Seattle, uh, humbly, uh, uh, in my opinion, over over the course of 50 years, but certainly our, our MLS time. Uh, and I believe with all my heart uh, that that Craig uh, can continue that work uh, and allow us to be even more successful. Um, uh, the the next period of time is going to be really exciting uh, in, in, in soccer, in this community. Um, obviously, a bunch of you got to, to watch the end of, um, of the World Cup game, the, the Mexico-Saudi Arabia game. Um, that level of excitement, energy, uh, as we lead up to hosting the World Cup in 2026 is just like enough to make someone so excited about uh, what is in store for us. But we've got lots of milestones along the way. Um, we have an exciting new tournament in our league, uh, in, in uh, the Leagues Cup coming next year. We have a 50th anniversary um, uh, coming in, in 2024. Uh, we have the, the evolution of this, this building, this facility, uh, into a um, uh, a, a piece of infrastructure that will help us for the next generations. Uh, generations of young players, generations of young people growing up in the organization, uh, growing as individuals, growing as executives, um, uh, so that they may sit up here well beyond when we're all done, uh, 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 being a, a steward of the franchise, and in a leadership position uh, with this organization as a steward of this franchise, which is really what we, uh, what we think of ourselves as. Um, and then again, you know, not the end of the, the, the um, excitement and uh, lead into uh, a great period of time, but the, you know, the 2026 World Cup, um, it, it, it is just gonna be remarkable uh, in this community. Uh, and the legacy that we're able to leave behind uh, coming out the other end of the World Cup. So, um, you know, with that, again, I, I, I just have to reiterate how excited I am uh, to work with uh, Craig. Um, 
his humility, uh, the, the things that are important to him, leadership, coaching, developing people, giving people responsibility and, and uh, um, the tools to do their job uh, well. Um, I have all the confidence in the world that, that all those attributes uh, will continue to make the Sounders uh, successful for, uh, for the next uh, bunch of years ahead. So with that, Craig, thank you, welcome, um, and uh, great to have you on the special. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for the kind words, and, and thank you for the opportunity, not only to yourself, but to the rest of the ownership. Uh, a, a quick thank you to my wife and daughter, who are part of this journey of professional sport, which is wildly adventurous, even with a 20-year hiatus at, at a club. Uh, they've moved several times and, and fulfilled the journey with me, so it's, it's wonderful to be back. It was awesome coming back a year and a half ago. Again, I think Garth as well, uh, uh, a legacy, a standard that, that we all understand that Brian and Adrian, Ziggy, Garth have all built and over the last several years that uh, is, is just, just shy of perfect. Uh, they've, they've won every trophy and, and so the standard's obvious here and, that, and that's what we intend to live up to. Not, not only on the field, but, uh, but off the field, I, I, I really do, uh, I embrace the growth of the people around us, the people you guys don't get to see very much of. Hopefully we make some names in our organization a little more well known in terms of the technical side. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do some structuring uh, that I think is really going to exploit some of, the, some of the awesome talent that we currently have in our organization, and, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. Shortly in the future, but um, I, I, I truly am humbled. I'm a Northwest kid. I was, I lived on the correct side of the river in southern Washington. I might have been born on the other side, but I lived on the correct side. I grew up in northern Idaho and, and went to high school in eastern Washington. And I'm a, I'm a ridiculously proud University of Washington graduate. And uh, you'll see me in UW hoodies at some point. Promise, but uh, I, I really do this adventure. This adventure in sport. Uh, when I when I entered in the MLS, I was coming back to play for Brian on loan from the Galaxy, and, and getting to know Adrian and Brian 21, 22 years ago, something along those lines. I try to lose when I get over two decades. I try to forget. But uh, well, what an what an awesome day. Um, a club that I've known my entire life, and an, and an unbelievable opportunity to come in here and share share this this opportunity and this leadership. And I look forward to, to really embracing uh, all of it. And in general, I get to sit behind all of you and listen to your questions to Brian. So it'll be really interesting today to, to sit with the story about it was in Indiana from Cincinnati. It was bus trip, yeah, wherever that was. I'll tell you guys that story off off the record. But <laughs> that story brings up. Uh, his character. I think Craig's character back then, you know, he was coming from an MLS team, coming down to help a USL program in leadership. He was one of the guys, but you could tell, you know, he, he, he was an MLS guy and he was good and he was confident, quite confident. So I appreciated that as a, as a young USL coach. So thank you for that. And now as we see his career progressing, as I've watched the last year and a half of him interacting with my staff, with people in the organization, he's a really tremendous people person. And that's what, what I appreciate. And so I'm looking forward to an opportunity to do good things. I think you said it well. I think Adrian Zig started the club off in a very good fashion. I you know, tip my hat to Zig a lot of times. You know, Garth came here and did a good job. We've all done a good job. This organization is set up through the efforts of many, many people, you guys included, to be successful. And we are just going to share in our commitment to work together to try and keep that standard high and continue to win games and work in unison with all of the people in the organization to make sure that we can rise to the opportunity of the 50 years, and also, of course, what Adrian touched on the World Cup, which is, it, it's just gonna be massive. So thank you. Uh, and how do you plan to attack that World Cup challenge? 
Yeah, I, I actually, you know, sometimes changes are made because other people get amazing opportunities, not necessarily because something's broken. And uh, and I think that's that's the situation we're in. You know, Garth Garth got an amazing opportunity, and, and it was the right thing for him and his family. So I don't think there's any glaring holes personally. Uh, now I am a little bit biased because I've been part of the project for a year and a half, and I acknowledge that. But I don't think drastic change is, is something we're looking at. We we are definitely pursuing a couple of a couple of players at the moment to fulfill and, and fill in the roster spots that we think are the most uh, most in need, not only from a depth perspective, but for the coaches to have more choices on how to attack an opponent or, or how to adjust in game. And those are uh, pretty complex conversations at times in terms of tactical understanding of how we want to go about it. But it's it's now my turn to sit sit in the sit in the, the, the key chair and, and listen and, and figure out exactly how this staff want to attack games and the adjustments they want to be able to make. And so I think in terms of addressing what we need in the short term, I, th I think we need to believe in what what we have. You know, this group won the Champions League last year, and I think we were a little unfortunate with some injuries throughout the year to some some key components of our group. But this is a darn good group, and, and it's one that I firmly believe in. And I think in the short run, if we can strengthen it without overhauling it, it's probably the best approach. Stay here, Maz, and then Jeff. Without comparing, sorry, without comparing, what are you going to bring in that technical chair, given your unique experiences? It's a, a great open-ended question. Uh, I can take that anywhere. <laughs> Give me something. Yeah, no, I appreciate this all. Uh, no, look, I, 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 I have run a club. I've made a lot of difficult decisions in the past. I think the difficult decisions are, are far more rare than the, the, the everyday decision. And I think continuation in this club and the belief of what's been established prior to my, my taking on these responsibilities there's been a, a great focus on this club the last five to seven years about the youth and the development and the, the players that are coming through and our coaches have embraced a lot of that and they've embraced those players so i think continuing some of the main themes but also acknowledging that mls is rapidly changing and investment is rapidly changing and uh, structure on a team and belief in a system and, and something we saw you know Yes, we had an adverse year last year, but one thing we definitely saw across the league was teams teams with a clear structure that you knew what to expect every week did quite well last year. And, and that's something that we're gonna work to define and Brian and I have, and the staff have met repeatedly already about really like I having a very clear expectation for our fans. What do the fans expect to see when they walk in the stadium? And there were times last year where I I know we spoke after games where we said, man, that wasn't anything what we thought we were going to see. Not for the good, not for the good reasons, but for the, you know, for the wrong reasons. And that's, that's what we attack. We attack consistency. We attack per, the pursuit of perfection. And, and that's kind of a, I think Brian and I share the same stubbornness in our view of that. Like we, we both pursue perfection with the idea that it's quite unattainable, uh, but that doesn't deter us from that vision. So. Really adding that definition, that structure, the everyday experience for our players and for our staff to come in with an optimism, with a, hey, what happened yesterday doesn't define us good or bad, never too high, never too low, but at the same time, um, last year challenged us in many ways. And we need to walk back in the door this year and redefine not only to ourselves, but to our players that it was an anomaly. And we got it. We need to get right back to excellence. We ran multiple franchises, were very successful, came from a, a pretty unique legal background. I'm wondering what, what some of the things might be that you were able to pick up from him in the couple of seasons that you spent working alongside of him that maybe you didn't have in your first go around with Real, Real Salt Lake and that you might be able to apply going forward. Um, my dad and I always joke about public speaking and we say, you know, you never want to follow the best public speaker because you're going to stand out for the wrong reasons. Uh, Garth, Garth is the best. 
it, it's fun for myself and for everyone else in the league that he's no longer in this role because now we can actually have another conversation that doesn't involve just his name. Uh, with that said, you know, he's a mentor, he's a good friend, and I've learned a lot from him over the last 18 months specifically on the way he interprets uh, situation, the way he pursues players, the way he encourages staff, the way he communicates with uh, player representatives and, and the likes, and, and also strategically how to build a roster and how to spend money on a roster effectively, and which positions do you have TAM players and designated players, all of these uh, buckets that, that players fall in with titles in our league. And so just getting to spend that 18 months with him on a daily basis and hearing his ideas and, and getting, honestly, to discuss it with him and, and at, on days argue about our, our viewpoints and, and walk away with it just in a, a lot of respect for one another has taught me a lot. In terms of, uh, you know, my previous experience to, to the Sounders, I, I think the league evolves so quickly, it's, it's genuinely hard to go back four, five, six years and apply that to today. We're a growing league, we're a growing business, but we're also an, an aggressively growing uh, soccer culture in America. And the expectations, thankfully, from you guys, increase every year. And I think that keeps a healthy pressure on, on Brian. I think it'll keep a healthy pressure on myself. I know Adrian has felt that healthy pressure for, for, for quite a while too as an owner. So um, I, I think when I sit back and I, I digest experience, it's, it's an interesting thing because I can rely on that to give you a bunch of canned answers as to what I think it'll help me improve upon or anything else. What it's actually, in my world, good for is reflection. And I can reflect and uh, I can ask friends. I have, I have many friends in this industry that are brutally honest. And I'm able to ask them, what do I need to get better at? What do you think I'm better at? What do you think I need to improve upon? And that's, I think, where the, the greater part of the growth comes from, is, is being able to make mistakes and not, not fear the failure. In our world, I think a good season, we win half our games. And a great season, we win just a little bit more. So if you can imagine being, a, being impressed by being good at your job half the time, or at least that's the interpretation. You know, we, we live in an interesting world where our performance comes down to a very minute space of time throughout a calendar year to, to judge ourselves again. So every day we will, we will pursue um, good players. We're, we're interested in, in opening our searches up to new, new parts of the world, new cultures, bringing in more players from other cultures, and, and really making this club more of what we say we are, which is diverse and accepting. And if we can bring in, bring in the domestic talent that we've always maintained as well as add to it, that'll be a great, that'll be a great experience for all of us. And, and that's where I think my experience will come in handy. I brought a lot of international players into the league when I was at Salt Lake. Um, I think we were able to focus on young domestic talent when I was in Salt Lake, but here I think we, uh, we have a really strong brand. And I think our brand speaks for itself. I think we attract a lot of players, and I think not missing on good opportunities is going to be the key in the short. Just power thirsty <laughs> humans. Um, <laughs> I know for me, that I go to sleep every night thinking, how do I wake up tomorrow and establish dominance over, ever, over the world? <laughs> you know, look, I, this, this is about, this is about a unifying vision. And, I, and it's not rainbows and unicorns, and it's not perfect, but we have to disagree. If we agree every day, it means one of us isn't doing our job. And so there will be disagreements. There will be judgment on my performance from him, and there'll be judgment on his performance for me, and those will be conversations we'll have. But uh, I, I know it's both of our preference that we have those conversations with each other and, and with Adrian. And then we open the door and we walk out and, and we fight on behalf of the badge. And the badge represents so much more than us. You know, like I said before, I've been gone 20 years. It turns out the club's still here. They've done all right. You know, so I think humility is an important thing for both of us, and uh, I, I hope that power is not really a word that we 
express or desire. And I don't think either one of us enter into this with, with that as a goal. You know, we both fully understand being Northwest guys that this club's going to be here a long time. A long time. Can I guess how that works? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, um, the timing of this had, had, had was, was somewhat uh, complicated. Um, again, uh, uh, backing up a little bit, you know, Garth and I started sitting down talking six months ago about what the what the future would hold, um, uh, and uh, and obviously we had a uh, annual business meeting uh, not long ago uh, where Garth uh, received a, a, a large amount of support, ninety percent support, but in my mind. That, that support, obviously Garth did great work, but to me that is organizational support. That is a 90% vote of confidence in, in the direction in which we're going. Um, uh, in my mind, my relationship with wives over the, over the years and certainly uh, the last 18 months, uh, there was no better candidate. Um, uh, we, we certainly talked to the league about the process. Um, there, you know, there are certain um, uh, DEI processes that, that um, uh, the league promotes that we are super supportive of organizationally. Um, uh, and so we consulted with the league and, and uh, um, the league is very supportive of internal candidates. Uh, who have earned their chance uh, to be promoted. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, I, I won't get into whether we did a bunch of interviews or did not, but from, from day one, when I, you know, thought that, the, that there might be a possibility that, that Garth could move on, uh, my, my first choice was, was uh, the, the gentleman sitting to my left. Okay, Dave, we'll come over to you. Craig, this is probably a hard question to answer just because development takes time. But how wholeheartedly agree on is that players ultimately define their opportunities. Uh, and, and I think that's important to acknowledge because in our process of trying to promote young, young players and integrate them into the top level, we need to see them perform at a high level at the defiance. We need to give them opportunities within the first team when they're deserved and when they're earned uh, you know i'm not the guy that that walks in and tells brian or the staff who to choose that's not that's not my job you know we look at a bigger vision and one of our bigger visions is the integration of some of these young talented players and we saw some of it last year you know obed's injury obviously cut his experience short but we we got to see josh and danny and leo and Reed Baker, Whiting, you know, we, we get to see some of these young guys make debuts, getting games. Um, Ethan is another another player that pops to mind who, at the beginning, the, the player that walked in the locker room at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year, you know, this was an evolution of a young man that, that convinced the staff over time to, to choose him. And I think we just need to continue in our belief that it will work. We need to continue in our belief that, that these young men will develop and we need to give them the opportunities to develop and I think one of the one of the hardest parts of our job is you know, we're on display two hours a, a week but it's the other days that, that go into the decisions and I assure you that, that our staff has never selected a player for anything aesthetic or cosmetic or any business purpose they select players based on trying to win games and that's on behalf of the organization, on behalf of the fan base. And I know that's something we both wholeheartedly agree that that's the approach. And so uh, these young men will be treated the right way. They'll be treated as equal, and, and they'll be given the opportunities on a daily basis to earn the minutes. And and yeah, it'll it'll be my job to to make sure that that's not being overlooked in pressure-filled moments. And maybe sometimes the coaches are under a little more pressure because of results than others. It'll be my, my role and my responsibility to communicate with Brian and with the staff on a daily basis that you know, 
that can't alter the way we go about our job. Emotion drives a lot of decisions. There's a lot of subjectivity in what we do, and, and I think it's important to acknowledge that you and I will watch every game, and we will see it differently, regardless of the result or, or the way it comes out. And, and that might be good by me and bad by you, or bad by you and good by me. We don't know um, until it's interpreted, but, but this is a really difficult job that these, these coaches have. You know, they, they're, they're tasked with interpreting subjectively on, as, as best they can how to get that result. And it's my job to remind them what our core values are driving that, that training. So um, that's where we need to start, is we need to make sure we all have a great understanding of the five to 10 really firm beliefs that, that are driving our decisions. And then kind of bounce all of our decisions when we evaluate them, come back to those pillars and, and make sure we made them the right way. And we, we, will get, we will get some wrong, I promise. I'll, I'll address that by saying he chose the two wrong people to address that. I'll, I'll let Craig, Craig take that. No, 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 go ahead. Go for it. <laughs> uh, we're, we're working on the structure, like I said. We're, we're looking at, at a lot of the people we have and, and really looking at the talent that's in-house right now and making sure we're going to expand roles that fit and making sure that we're going to take advantage of the talent we have. Uh, we will look outside the organization once we've established exactly what we need, but we don't feel a, a, an extreme rush to run out and, and fill any position, any particular title. Uh, you guys will figure out all the time, I'm not a huge title person. I, I'm a roles and responsibilities and let's get the job done person. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look at everyone's strengths. We've got some very, very talented people that I would like to see take some big steps forward in their responsibilities. And then from there, we'll figure out exactly what we need once we get those defined. We've been under promise, over deliver. Uh, no, I, look, I, I am not the type of, I'm not good at self-promotion. It's never been a strength of mine. I'm, I'm more of a person that likes to put my head down and, and I try to let my work speak for itself. I would rather earn someone's respect quietly than tell them why they need to respect me. And I think uh, this environment that I was brought into with Garth and Brian and Adrian, I was allowed to do that. I was allowed to fulfill a lot of roles underneath the spotlight and the cameras and the microphones. And I think for me, it was important to come in and, and just do my job. I've always been that way, I think come on loan and play for Brian when I went through my MLS career. I, I've, I've never been the superstar. I, I was never that person on a team. I don't feel I need to be. I just want to be part of the team. I want to be part of the championship. And I think culturally that fits here. And I think that the elevation of the people around us, whether it be on an org chart under, uh, those types of things, they're not relevant to me. Well, what's important is good people doing a job on on behalf of the community, which is what we represent. And there's lip service, and then there's real words. And, and I sincerely mean this is on behalf of the fans because I will be a fan one day. That's the existence of a general manager. I'll become a fan of the Sounders as I always have been. I brought my daughters to games when I was coaching at Washington when she was two and three. Now. She has a little bit different experience coming in and seeing this. And, and by the way, uh, Jocelyn, if you've sweet talked your teacher out of class to watch this, I appreciate it and I love you, but get back to school. <laughs> People move on, um, uh, whether it's players, coaches, managers, uh, people in the equipment room, uh, people in the, on the medical staff, Trainer, it, and and on the business side, I could I could you know put the list together as well. Um, I will move on. Craig will move on. Brian will move on. Um, but it is the you know it's the people and the culture and and you know back to you know to Aaron's question about um, power dynamic. Um, 
our jobs as leaders, owners, leaders of the organization is to create a shared set of values, vision, and strategic objectives, which are which are certainly discussed, but at some level are non-negotiable. Um, and that is the, the way we live our, our organization. And that eliminates a lot of power dynamic and it, and it hopefully codifies and systematizes success. Um, it's not easy, uh, it's evolving, um, you always have to be uh, a step ahead, changing, thinking, you know, being innovative. But if we do our jobs right as leaders, then then the void will be filled by other great people who were, will carry on uh, the legacy uh, that's existed now for 50-ish years. So we're we're very confident that uh, that much success uh, lies in front of us. The the club, if I can just add on to that. The club is not just one person, it's a bunch of people that have done a great job. I can I can answer your question, there is no distraction. Uh, Craig was here for 18 months, the players all know him, he's been in the locker room on multiple occasions. Uh, we get along, there are no power dynamics, we're a working relationship. You know, I lost Jimmy Traore as a coach, Ante Razov, who's now an MLS Cup winner, we lost Gonzo, uh, and the team has continued their success. I view last year as a success. Champions League was a massive deal. And so whatever the learning curve we had towards the end of the year, yeah, we talked about it. We've already discussed it internally as a staff, with Craig, without Craig. And so the continuity, the, uh, the humility, the working together, all of that's already happening. And it will not be a distraction for what will hopefully be a tremendous year. And I'm looking forward to working with Craig uh, to try and get us to where we need to be. <laughs> well, there is no news on where the tournament is going to be held, when the actual dates are. Uh, Craig does not know anything. I don't know if Adrian does. I think we're all still in limbo, which uh, creates a lot of problems for Grant Clark. Uh, how do we plan preseason? You know, what do we do? So that is just something that we're keen on trying to find out exact dates and we'll plan from there. Um, I'll land in Doha on Saturday and I will find someone from FIFA and corner them and <laughs> see if we can get some answers. So, uh, no, I, 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 you know, again, we have heard early February, decision coming, location, but, um, but yeah, it's, it is, uh, it's causing some challenges, and, but as always, we, um, you know, try to run tur towards burning buildings and solve problems, and, and we will figure this one out too. <laughs>